And we'll see. Are they willing to compromise or negotiate with me at all? Or are they going to tell me just to step in line and do as I'm told? I suspect the latter, and that's you know really the problem we're going to have. But I do have a little bit of leverage here, and I'm trying to get, maybe freedom works can help, uh, bug all the other cons so-called conservative senators and House members, bug them and say, look, you shouldn't be supporting a budget that doesn't balance. Why don't you be hardcore, and four or five of you could force Maybe I'm running out a little bit here, but it already seems the concern I have is uh, I remember the Bush administration, uh, as I'm sure you do too, uh, though you weren't in the Senate yet, and the spending that Republicans we, we blew through uh, blew through the budget. We had budget deficits every year, high, big budget deficits, and a lot of it was domestic spending. It wasn't just national security spending. It was largely why I chose to run for office. The right. Bush administration went from five trillion dollar debt right. to a ten trillion dollar debt over eight years. And it really bothered me that Republicans became big spenders. I don't want that to happen again. The other problem is, is when you look at the budget, two-thirds of it is entitlements, right. a third is non-entitlements. Most people only look at the third. But if you eliminate the third, which is military and non-military, and I'm not proposing to do that, but if you eliminated it completely, you still don't balance because entitlements are growing so rapidly because the baby boomers are all retiring and we've got Medicare and Social Security needs. So I think we do need to, to look at entitlements. President-elect Trump I've tried to agree with him when I can, but he's also said he hadn't been interested in looking at entitlements. And I think if you do, if you are unwilling to do that, I just don't think you're a fiscal conservative or you're, or you're serious about the, the the significance of a twenty trillion dollar debt. No, I think we have. I mean, you have to look at entitlements. You have to take them seriously because I mean, the most conservative estimate that out there says fifty four trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities. That's Medicare, Social Security over the next seventy five years. The most ominous ones say more than two trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities. So we have to take this seriously. Right. And there are ways you can do it, but the sooner you get to it, the better. Mm -hmm. So for example, the main reason Social Security and Medicare are going bankrupt is that we're living longer. And that we had a whole bunch of babies born in the 40s and 50s, and then they had smaller families, and then their kids had smaller families. So it was a demographic shift. And so we have this 10 or 20 year period where the baby boomers all retire, that expenses go up in an extraordinary way. And uh, Your age that I run into, um, they don't think they're getting going to be able to get Social Security at 67. Um, and so you're probably planning for it. People try to put money aside in retirement things to plan in case the government's not there. But uh, the people who are completely dependent on Social Security in order to try to protect them from it going bankrupt, um, we have to do something to shore it up. And really, uh, two thirds of the Social Security problem can be fixed if you gradually let the age go up. Do you have a really great? Uh slides that you that your team put together and sent over to us and we're going to try to get these posted somewhere online so we can show them to everybody who's listening and watching but you you show basically right as it is right now if you freeze discretion discretionary spending just discretionary spending the budget never balances if you free freeze everything uh including entitlements four years uh the bu budget the, the, we're on an unsustainable course and thank you for what you're doing to uh, raise awareness to it um is, are you thinking about introducing any sort of legislation that would deal with entitlements or deal with the budget? And, and our, our key thing right now is trying to push Senate Republicans to negotiate with us on a balanced budget, or a budget that balances at some time. The one, the budget they're putting forward will never balance, not in 10 years, not in 20 years, not in 1,000 years. That shouldn't be what we're for and shouldn't, you know, shouldn't be what we're advocating for. And so we'll push and we'll see. The only way you get anything around here is if you have leverage and you refuse to comply. And that's what I'm saying is I will not be part of this. And uh, as much as I hate Obamacare, I can't be part of, of being for a plan that never balances. So let's see. We're going to see in the next couple of weeks. Are they willing to negotiate? Right now, there's at least two of us, I think, that are saying no. And two uh, leads to a 50-50 tie. And until January 20th, that would be broken by, by Biden. And so they don't have the power to do what they want uh, without my vote or my consent. And so you know, uh, astronomical increase, and we should try to correct some of that. Well, we look at the uh, other countries, the Euro zone, where they've seen sovereign debt crises, and in Greece, who uh, they've experienced a sovereign debt crisis. We're ignorant if we think that can't can't happen here. It can happen even to the greatest, strongest country in the world, and uh, we should not believe that we are immune to the forces of uh, the economic rules. And so we do have to do something.
uh, should, should deliver that. So for the FreedomWorks activists who are watching this right now, the ones who plan to promote it to uh, promote this video to over the next several days, what would you tell them? How can they get involved in this process? How they can give, how can they give you aid to uh, cut spending? Call your senators, call your congressmen, particularly the Republicans, because this is all Republicans that will decide the budget. Tell me you want to vote on a budget that does balance within a reasonable time, balance budget amendment, balances in five years. I see no reason why we shouldn't, as conservatives, advocate for a budget that balances within that window. Realize that most Republicans in Washington are saying it doesn't matter. In fact, they've changed the name of the budget. They're going to call it the vehicle to repeal Obamacare. But you can do both. It's not an either or. We are in charge. No Democrat will vote for the budget. So why don't we put forward something that we actually believe in that is conservative? It's a bad sign if we beg and plead and ask people for money and we get up here and we say it's going to be different when we're in charge. And then we're in charge of all three branches of government. The first thing we're going to do is pass a budget that never balances. I think that's a really bad plan. It's also, when we passed the Budget Control Act in 2011, we were told that we had to negotiate, we had to get this, this is the best we could get at spending caps. We've blown through those spending caps twice. It sounds like we may be doing it again. Uh, Fiscal conservatives have a lot to be disappointed with, with Republicans in particular. The sequester was a slowdown in the rate of growth of spending. Spending was still going up every year with the sequester. $100 billion we exceed caps because we haven't been fiscally conservative enough. And I use the term we loosely because there are certain conservatives up here who are fighting for it, but there's not enough of us, and the rest of them need phone calls and emails and lots of them. Well, thank you so much, Senator. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank uh, you.